Even if you aren't paying attention to current events, you know that for better or worse, a pretty significant change is coming. Change that will put you into a fear response. This isn't a problem. Your fear response can be beneficial if it is well-directed. When the fear response isn't well-directed, it can scatter your thoughts and put you into an ADHD mindset. Good martial artists know what is within their range and what is without. When fierce attacks are on a trajectory to miss, they don't flinch and are expressionless. When feints come out of range, they don't fall for the trap. The arms, legs, or weapons form a sphere of influence. It serves no purpose to overextend yourself beyond your reach. Doing so leaves you off balance and vulnerable to a counterattack. Most importantly, it wastes energy. One of the most useful techniques in combat is to use fear to get the opponent to overextend themselves beyond their circle of influence. If you can distract them from this fear, you can quickly exploit their weaknesses. Within daily life, we overextend and worry about things beyond our control. Some of these worries are from inside of yourself. Some come from outside influences and are designed to destabilize you by getting you to focus on problems that are beyond your reach. It's not uncommon to see novice fighters throwing their heads forward in an attempt to gain extra reach. For more seasoned competitors, this is an easy target. With a scared novice, you can lift your hand up from 15 feet away and they will throw their hands up to cover their face. This fear response puts them on the defensive, and from that moment forward, you know that they will be too focused on themselves to present any kind of a meaningful counterattack. Fear can have the same crippling grip on your own life. This scattering of your consciousness inhibits memory, and the low-dose panic can negatively influence your decision-making. This is no small detail. Your life is a series of decisions about how you will adapt to change. The worse you do, the more of your energy and resources become scattered and make you vulnerable. The better you do, the more they coalesce and serve you so that you can thrive no matter what the external environment throws at you. When the world is in flames, you can bring stakes and bask in the warmth. When the world is in an ice age, bring your skis. When you have your adrenal response in check, you can more easily find the opportunities within chaos. A man was on a sled going through Siberia. He was tracked by wolves who came closer to him every night. Instead of being afraid, he found comfort in knowing that a fresh supply of meat and furs were so close by. They were being delivered to him by God. He dined on them. The winter had caused their fur to become thicker, and he enjoyed the warmth they provided. Although their intent was to devour him in the night, he was able to see past the fear and make use of their intent for his own advantage. Their sphere of influence was limited to the attack formation of the pack. His was greater thanks to having a gun. There's another story coming to us from Japan about a Zen master and a samurai. A Zen master saw a samurai practicing and said to the samurai, if you could only overcome your fear, you would be such a good swordsman. The samurai was enraged and said, Listen, you little twerp, who the heck are you to talk to me about anything? I'm going to cut your head off right now. The Zen master said, Okay, let's have a duel, but we do it on the place of my choosing. The samurai agreed. The Zen master pointed to a cliff and said, it will be up there. Together they climbed to the top of the cliff, and the samurai began to put his hand on his sword. The Zen master said, Not just yet. There's a tree sticking out from the cliff. Its roots are barely hanging on, and half of its branches are dead. We'll fight there. The Zen master got down onto the tree and everyone could hear it creaking and starting to break under his weight. But he walked out 
and then out onto a dead branch. He said to the samurai, here is where we will fight. The samurai took a couple of steps onto the tree, but was too scared to go out, much less draw his sword. The Zen master said, when you can conquer yourself in your own fear, then you will be ready to conquer others. The samurai got back up onto the cliff, bowed to the Zen master, and asked to be his student. This story has also been found within modern combatives. In the Sistema Manual by Major Konstantin Komarov, he describes some training exercises done by the Soviet army. They would have men march on a plank about a foot off of the ground. At this height, everybody could march across it in perfect formation. Then they would bring it up 10 feet. At 10 feet, only 20% of the people could get across it, and their balance was unstable. Finally, they lifted it up 20 feet in the air. At this height, only 1% of the people could get across. Even though the physical activity was the same, their own fear paralyzed them from being able to march. I saw this as well within a business environment. I had a business mentor in China who I learned from for a couple of years. He used the fear response with himself and with others in order to level uneven playing fields. We were once with some men from Shanghai who were some of the most brilliant men I had ever met. They would be able to run statistics in their mind in the midst of conversations. The man who was teaching me had no such mental powers, but what he did have was a good command over his fear response. After taking the guys out for a couple of days and not letting them sleep very much and putting them in unfamiliar circumstances, their fear response would go up. As a result, their intelligence went down and their decision-making plummeted. They revealed information on their side of the business deal that showed that they were being deceptive. Although they were much smarter, when they were put into a situation of unfamiliarity, their fear had the same grip on them as those soldiers who were marching 20 feet in the air, and as it did on the samurai on the branch sticking out of the cliff. Today we're going to go over how we can use breathing and plant-based medicines to master the fear response and ultimately our lives. The key to this is to have a well-regulated adrenal response. The first step is to get rid of long-term fears which can hold us in patterns of imbalance. The second is to master your adrenal response in the present so that you can enjoy poise and balance in the midst of chaos. The first way we address this is with breathing. For long-term fear and tension, it will either cause tension in the legs or tension in the shoulders. Typically, it will do both. When you want to claw someone's face off or climb up a tree but can't, it will tend to cause tension within the shoulders. The shoulders will begin to rise up. And this is a sign of anger. When there is fear response signaling us to run away, but we're not able to, it tends to cause tension within the legs. A good exercise to get rid of this is to breathe like you're sighing. <sighs> For long-term injuries and fear response and anger responses that have been trapped within the body, shaking them out can be very useful. I used to spend a couple of hours once a week shaking my body at different amplitudes while sighing to completely remove tension in the body that had built up over years. In doing so, it greatly improved my physical balance, my athletic coordination, and my endurance. It increased my speed with martial art training for both punches and kicks. It allowed the tensegrity waves to go through my body without causing pain. Once you learn how to sigh, you can gear down your body and begin to relieve tension which has been there for a long period of time. Once you do this, and you find yourself in a very steady state where, if anything, you can sleep easily and you begin to yawn, then it's time to begin the second stage. 
The second step involves deep, slow, diaphragmic breathing, done in such a way as to create a sensation of warmth around the kidneys and the lower abdomen. The first stage with the old fears can be complicated by gut microbiota. Your gut microbes can hijack your opiate receptors. They do this because they're ordering pizza or ice cream, whatever they may want. They get into your opiate receptor sites and they block them. This raises the anxiety that you experience and it is only abated when you give them what they want. These pathogenic bacteria control you like a puppet. This is true with all of us to varying degrees. The more regulated our stress responses are with gut bacteria, the less we experience these mood fluctuations and the easier it is for us to gear down the stress response. This understanding is well known within Chinese medicine. And it's why formulas that are designed for the stress response will also take into account digestion. In fact, they're said to protect the digestion from the response of anger. One of the safest and most powerful formulas for doing this, which is very commonly used all over East Asia, is called Xiaoyao San. This literally means wandering powder. Sometimes it's translated as free and easy wanderer. What this does is it helps to gear down the stress response and protect your gut microbiota. This formula has a regulatory effect on nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is an important gasotransmitter. It's a gas that works as a neurotransmitter in the body. It helps nerves to communicate with other nerves, even if they can't directly communicate. It travels through membranes and can influence intracellular communication. It is responsible for most aspects of homeostasis in the body, and in particular, the hypothalamic, pituitary, and adrenal system. It balances hormonal production and distribution. It reduces stress hormones and regulates sleep. Long-term stress can elevate cortisol. When it's elevated for long periods of time, it can cause malfunctions with your stem cells. Xiaoyao-san helps to protect this by gearing down the cortisol and helping to protect the stem cells. It has regulatory effects on dopamine, noradrenaline, and melatonin. It's an antioxidant, and it's been found to help with Alzheimer's disease, major depression, and insomnia caused by psychological stress. Once these systems are regulated, it then becomes safer to boost. People often talk about having taxed adrenals, but the way that you actually restore the adrenals is by signaling the genetic expression of adrenocorticotropic hormone, ACTH. Once the HPA axis is well regulated, it's then safer to begin signaling the genetic expression of adrenocorticotropic hormone. This is what's done when people have so-called adrenal deficiency or burnt out adrenals. These low levels of ACTH are also associated with low levels of cortisol, this is associated with having a long-term fear response in the body. Traditionally, Jingwei Shenqi is taken to help protect the body against shock, such as shock from extreme news or just to give people nerves of steel when they need them the most. This information was also echoed in an animal trial. Scientists scared the living bejesus out of a group of rats. Then they discovered that there was a gene expression of CFOS in the hippocampus and thalamus. This expression was elevated the more scared the rats were. Jingwei Shenqi lowered the elevation of this by protecting the gene methylation switches. By taking Jingwei Shenqi, it allowed the rats to experience shock, but not embody it as a fear response in the long run. It protected their genetic expression of CFOS so that it wasn't elevated. All of the rats experience shock, just as we all do in daily life. Whether or not that shock causes the genetic expression of C-FOS in the hippocampus and the thalamus has to do with our regulatory systems. 
If you're going to be in a situation that may cause you to be experiencing shock or increased nerves, taking Jingwei Shenqi may be helpful. But again, check with your acupuncturist or doctor. Jingwei Shenqi increases the expression of ACTH. It's been found that people with ADHD have normal fear responses initially, but the fear remains in the body. Those stress hormones remain active, and they don't gear down. As a result, it puts people in this state of hypervigilance where they're distracted because they're looking over their shoulder for the next lion attack. Being able to gear down these gene expressions and keep the HPA axis in alignment can greatly enhance our ability to focus, remember new information, and be at our best state of poise and balance as we go through life. Jingwei Shenqi also increases testosterone in animal and human studies. Lan, how can we find the best quality and how will we know when it's safe to use? For Xiaoyao San, we're taking one of the main active ingredients, peony florin, as index. There are several dosage forms of Xiaoyao San that you can find in the market, such as small honey pills, big honey pills, water extract pills, and concentrated pills. For each dosage form, the quality criteria might be a little bit different. For example, for small honey pill, it should contain more than 0.7 mg per gram of peony florin. For big honey pills, it should contain more than 6.3 mg. And water extract pills should contain more than 2.5 mg. And concentrate pills should contain more than 4 mg. There's another way to take it in a more enjoyable way, which will be tea. The Xiaoyao San herbal tea form, it has a little bit minty and gingery taste, so it's very easy to drink compared to most of other herbal formulas. Some of them don't have very pleasant taste, and this one is very tasteful. We have patients who would start with pills because they're more convenient, and then later they will switch to teas because they found that actually teas are working even better than pills. Jingwei Shen Qi is available in both pills and teas as well. However, for Jingwei Shen Qi, you shouldn't take it if you are pregnant. For both formulas, when you are taking them, you should avoid cold and raw food. Once you learn to calm your nerves in the face of adversity, you can begin to use fear to your advantage. You've probably heard the story about an elderly woman who lifts a car in order to save her grandchild. While we might not always be able to engage in superhuman feats of strength, we can utilize fear to our advantage. Fear can serve as a wake-up call. In fact, some of the same hormones associated with fear, these pulsatile releases of cortisol, serve to wake us up in the morning. It's the difference between waking up groggy and waking up ready to face the day. When we transform this power into tangible action and really focus our energy in one direction, it can be a source for incredible change within our lives. Change is a constant, and we're entering into times that should be, for better and worse, tumultuous. The waves of change will come, and some of these waves will be big. How we make use of these changes will make all the difference. We can let them crash into us, or we can ride them into the beach. The difference is in perspective, in poise, and in facing fear with resolve and relaxation. If you would like more information, references, or resources, please check us out at botanicalbiohacking.com. If you found this information valuable, please share it with your friends and family.